What is going on everybody? And in this video, we are providing you a state of the market in stock picks for June 7th, 2022. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day in the week ahead. And considering that this market is very lovely this year, uh, you might want to consider subscribing uh, because it is mass chaos. So being said, um, today, right, we the past couple of days have been a pure chop. Um, there is no real catalyst to send us up. There is no real catalyst to send us down. Uh, but one thing is for certain, we are flirting with a 20 EMA and it's something that I really do not like. Uh, now, if you want to look at the technicals, I've talked about this before about how, uh, when you retest a 20 EMA, uh, typically, especially in higher time frames, you will have a bit of a gap. You won't exactly touch it right on. Uh, these EMAs aren't exactly spot on. Uh, these EMAs aren't exactly spot on when you start looking at the higher time frames, and so they don't exactly touch. They can touch, uh, but majority of the time they do not. Uh, being said, we didn't touch quite here when we sold off here. Uh, we had a catalyst to pull us back down as well on the same day, and now we've been floating right on it. Uh, we essentially spent all last month trying to recover. Uh, again, all last month we flirted with a 75-point basis move. That's why we touched around 38.10. Uh, then they're saying, no, 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 it's just a 50 point basis move. So now this is essentially what the 50 point basis move is floating around. Uh, we do have uh, the Fed next week. Uh, that is ultimately what the market is waiting for. We do have core CPI on Friday. Um, that core CPI is debatable in my mind. Uh, it could sway the market pretty heavy, especially if the market doesn't move all week. Uh, it very well could wait until Friday. I, I don't believe that's going to be the case. I believe we're going to get some movement one way or the other uh, sometime this week. Uh, but as you can see, we are wedging. Now, this is on the daily. It doesn't look like much of a wedge. But if you drop down to the hourly, we're wedging pretty hard. And what I want to see tomorrow is where we land. Uh, do we went land below this? If we land below this, um, in my mind, this wedge really isn't going to matter. There's a lot of really heavy uh, resistance and support right here. Uh, so it more likely is just going to continue to chop. Uh, but if we do break below the 4075 tomorrow, uh, again, I think we could start revisiting some lows. Again, we're going to need a catalyst. Again, pop above it. Do I really see us break in 4187? Could be a strong possibility. Again, um, no news is good news at this point. We've had so much bad news that no news is a positive sign. The market might take that and then start, to, like I've always said, might story, start going up as designed to and uh, go from that point. Again, it is always 50-50. It doesn't matter which analysis you listen to, even if it's me, it's always going to be a 50-50 chance. I try to be as neutral as possible uh, when coming up with my theories. I base my theories off of events that are uh, up and coming and what I'm seeing in the charts and uh, particularly um, the price action in the charts tells you a lot. It tells you where the buyers are, tells you where the sellers are. Uh, again, why a big reason why I'm a big supporter of the supply and demand uh, zones, uh, because I feel that is the only thing that has worked. Uh, and then events uh, ultimately overrule that, um, but they still always land in supply and demand zones. Uh, for the most part, just being patient and let that event play out and then seeing what the next closest supply and demand zone is uh, from that point to take position. So even though it does seem that easy, and it can be that easy. It's still not always that easy. Uh, there's all, all types of comes, the things that come to play. That's where we have risk management. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we are in, in this tight wedge in this very tight spot. Uh, I'm really hoping we get out of here <laughs> before next uh, next week, next Wednesday, um, before we get that uh, meeting. Um, but the way things are going, um, we have to see. So again, I, I really want to break out of this either one, the, the, the 4089, or I want to break above the 4177, uh, and then take a position from that point. I think if you really play anything in between here, uh, you want it to either be really at the breaking point with a really tight stop below, or uh, right at the, uh, the top, uh, either going down <laughs> or up uh, with a tight stop. So you can play both sides either way, but as long as uh, wait till it plays that side. Don't play this middle area. This middle area is really chopping, especially if you're in options. It is just chopping and burning money is what it's doing at this point. And I think it's very well um, what the plan is, right? The market plan is just to just sit and wait. Uh, we have to figure out what the Fed is doing. Are they going to start becoming hawkish? 
uh, and start going more than 50 points, what is the case? Uh, again, Canada just announced, I think that's a big thing too, is just Canada announced the fact that they did a 50 point basis move and we're talking about another 100 point basis move on top of the 50. So if that's the case, uh, we could correct uh, more on top of what we already have. Again, always keep in mind that 38.10 is that 75 point basis move. Uh, so if it's 75 points, we could potentially uh, head down this way. Or, or if it's a 100 point basis move, we could potentially head down even lower, tack on another 5% onto that lower there. And then uh, that's pretty much where we could potentially be landing. Again, this is all just uh, my thesis to this point. So um, again, tomorrow, it really depends where we land on watching this wedge. We'll obviously break out of this wedge by the morning. Uh, Pre-market, we want to see if we're up or down on the top of this wedge and see where we go from there. Uh, Bitcoin is actually holding very well, back to 31. Uh, I love seeing this. Uh, I really think this is the base here that we've been consolidating around. Uh, yes, it's been fluctuating uh, pretty heavily around this area, but I do really like the fact that it's holding around the 3140, a 31K uh, mark roughly uh, between the 31 and uh, 29, 28. It's been uh, jumping back and forth, but it's been sitting nicely supporting there. Again, there's a lot of underlying things going on behind the, uh, behind the scenes as far as crypto is concerned. Um, you know, Facebook went to uh, Bitcoin, right? Because their, uh, their experiment with their own crypto currency didn't go through. So they're uh, relying on Bitcoin. Uh, you have Chipotle accepting crypto. You have a bunch of underlying um, brands that are coming into the NFT space that are doing all these other different things uh, that you need to understand. It's going to take them to slowly boil the water uh, to cook the frog, right? And it's, it's, it goes with that saying that uh, to cook a frog, you have to slowly raise the temperature of the water. And that's what we're seeing in crypto. And that's why you're starting to get normalization in crypto because of the fact that it's the slowly underlying infrastructure is being put in place uh, to slowly raise that temperature of that water. And that's what we are seeing. Uh, so if you are in the crypto space, you are still very early, uh, but just be aware that it's going to, by the time it actually hits, it's going to seem like it's overnight for a lot of people. Uh, just be mindful of that. Uh, anything in the crypto space, uh, you know, one week seems like or a month seems like a light year in crypto space. So it can move very fast. Uh, so being said, uh, again, do like where crypto is uh, going into tomorrow. Again, it's going to be the same game plan uh, pretty much. Let's go ahead and throw up the banks first. Um, the banks are an interesting spot. Like I said, they've ran up quite a bit and they have just held around here, JPM, uh, leading the pack, kind of leading this rally back up from where we were. Um, we really need this uh, to hold. And when you look at the daily here and uh, we're currently holding, we're all holding support here. We really don't want this to break below the 128. If uh, JPM does break, which you know, in my mind, you don't want a parabolic move. It's looked like it's waiting to roll over. I talk about rolling over is sometimes you get these massive parabolic moves, so you, you know, there's a couple day runs, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm expecting a pullback. And then so many times you, you're gonna get this chop and either it's gonna pop or it's gonna uh, pull back. So more than likely, I think um, we're going to get a pullback to this lower level, possibly 123. You don't see a crash, but uh, the, even the general index needs a, a pullback, like I've always said, uh, when you push and break resistance, you need to uh, have a pullback and retest or else um, that uh, current push, that parabolic push uh, will essentially almost flash crash right back down. Uh, so you want retesting that builds strength and momentum to the upside if it does that. It's also in turn, um, it does the same to the downside as well, right? You don't want to just uh, flush. Uh, we've had a lot of flushing this year and hardly any uh, pops, so just be aware of that. Uh, Golden Sachs, again, we had a um, same thing, had break. Did It did play out this pattern. It didn't completely sell off. It sold off quite a bit. Uh, now we're just in a holding pattern, Golden Sachs. So, again, some of these are really interesting. Like the pattern isn't like fully playing out. Normally you get a bigger retracement, but we got a little bit of a retracement there. Uh, this is kind of concerning here. Bank of America, uh, this one has probably been one of the weaker banks. And uh, it looks like it wants to break. If this breaks back below this, 36. Uh, so really keep this in mind tomorrow. If this breaks back below this, you could potentially start seeing back down to 33. Again, if the banks start giving out, uh, that's a telltale sign. The rest of the infrastructure of the market will start coming down. 
Uh, I don't, again, don't really see a crash. It could potentially happen. It, there's, you can't say it can't ever happen uh, because it can, right? And um, even though as much uh, stability and growth in the market that we're seeing, it's kind of holding the market up, which is good to see. It's to, good to see that people are starting to buy again and that we're not just uh, not bouncing and just continuing to sell. Uh, that is definitely a good sign. Uh, but uh, again, I don't think the selling might be done. Again, we need to pull back. I think it's important. Um, leading up until next week, I think it's more likely going to happen. I think we start seeing selling going into that just in preparation. It's just when does that happen? Uh, do we get a small rally before then? Or do, you, do we just sell off? And again, uh, banks are key for that. Uh, BA is good to use for value, to watch for value plays and see how they're doing. I uh, got a nice break and retest of the 20 here on the daily. So value might actually start pushing uh, could get a nice uh, push up out of that wedge for the index. If the banks start falling, uh, you want to make sure value and tech is holding. Um, more than likely, you're going to need both industries to push if the banks start falling out. Uh, you just need banks to hold. They don't have to push. And they don't have to sell as long as they just hold. Is really what we were looking for in the banks. Um, BA, again, looks decent. Uh, and then you're looking at tech. Apple's ha has had the dev conference, so they've been releasing a lot of um, information out there. It's kind of just, uh, it's obliterating some of these smaller companies out there and also helping some other companies. But uh, uh, Tesla, it's is really pinned here. It doesn't want to sell below the 700. Uh, if we do sell below the 700, I think it's a straight shot down to uh, 660 at that point. Um, I'm kind of really looking for that pullback. I don't see us going lower than that. Uh, again, we could re revisit the 625, maybe a brief visit to 600. Uh, but if we break the 600, right, we could potentially head all the way down to 500. Uh, strong possibility. We're still in this channel. We tried to break out, but obviously did not happen. Uh, so we're, I'm watching that, obviously, uh, Tesla going forward. Amazon, interesting spot. Again, parabolic move. I uh, had a lot of news. A catalyst to push us up here. Uh, it got rejected. Obviously, his first uh, attempt to try to break the 126. Again, stock split today. It's 20 to 1 stock split. That's why Amazon is at 124. Uh, but what we're watching here tomorrow is that if we break back below the 120, again, you can get a clear shot down the 115 and then uh, some of these other levels, 110 um, and the 100, about 103 mark. That's kind of what you're looking at. So Again, if it does break the 120, uh, I could get a massive flush uh, straight down to that from there. Uh, so I want to watch Amazon on that. AMD, really interesting spot here. Uh, I thought it would have broke out today, but we started selling back off. Chips had a, a lot of strength. You know, something to watch tomorrow. Uh, if this cannot hold, this could be actually a good short if the market starts to really start selling. Uh, so you're really kind of watching the break here. At the 104 mark, if we break below this or open below this and you see the candle, uh, you're going to probably get a little push after the break to retest that trend. And then you should get a heavy flush after that. Again, you've got strong uh, footing at 100. So, But uh, again, when you're looking at some of these uh, lower cap stocks, the, those uh, five point moves are, are quite a bit percentage wise. So, so nonetheless, I want to keep that on watch as well. And then that is uh, is pretty much it. I mean, Google, we can take a look at Google real quick. Uh, Google is getting rejected again. First retest of the 50, hard rejection. Uh, this didn't quite make it to the 50. So again, we could, to be honest, again, just want to reiterate, we could really see CHOP for a whole week and a half until we get answers from the Fed. Um, we really want to see if what the Fed is doing is making things better or worse is that that's ultimately what we're trying to gauge at this point you know, with their 50 point basis moves uh, that they're going to keep coming in with. Are they actually helping or are they making things worse? Uh, nothing is going, everything in the world is, is going bad, right? To just do the bare uh, minimum of living and, and existing it is getting extremely expensive. Uh, so being said, we have to see uh, how this thing plays out, but Google, uh, again, another uh, key one to watch, and it's uh, it's barely holding here. So if it does break the 276, uh, uh, could see a heavy flush here as well. They do have um, July 15th. There is their split. So you'll have the split too. So this will look like Amazon at 100 here pretty soon. And again, the reason for the splits 
or to uh, fight against essentially uh, any kind of recession uh, period uh, is why they're doing these splits. That's why you're seeing all these different splits going on at one time. Uh, Tesla did it earlier or later in the back half of last year. Or it was maybe it was this time last year. I can't remember with Tesla, but they did their split. So um, we have to watch. We have to see and then go from that point. So if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like button. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.